And yeah, thanks so much everybody for coming. Uh, I do see some familiar faces uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'm gonna be talking about large language models and how easy it is to get them running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and I've actually got my Raspberry Pi 5 here. Uh, so this is what I'm actually gonna be logging into um, and showing you uh, how this stuff works. So, uh, and all of the, uh, here we go. All of the code that I'm doing here is actually part of a course that I'm teaching at Stanford uh, called E292D. I'm actually gonna be uh, heading there right after this talk. Um, and uh, I've put the code for that uh, course that we're using for the assignments up at github.com ee292d uh, labs. Uh, and this is actually lab one uh, that I'll be uh, taking you through. But um, don't worry too much, there's um, not a whole lot to this lab. I'm gonna show you here if I... Uh, so I'm currently logged in to this Raspberry Pi 5, um, and what I've done is I've actually downloaded a model ahead of time uh, because the uh, conference Wi-Fi is uh, almost always uh, pretty terrible. Um, no shade on the uh, embedded vision folks, but it's just a fact of life. Um, but all you need to do to actually uh, run the large language model is uh, these 60 lines of Python. So I'm using llama.cpp, which is a Python package um, that lets you run uh, models in the GGML format. Uh, I've downloaded this uh, particular model um, that's from Microsoft, uh, that's called Orca, that's actually pretty good for conversations. Um, and then I just have a loop that calls into the model um, to uh, generate a response and then prints out the response and asks you what you want to run next. So if I run this, it will take a couple of seconds to boot up uh, and then I can ask it uh, a question. So let's, let's see what our chances of survival are like. And this is all running entirely locally with no network connection on the Pi. Um, it's using the Raspberry Pi's uh, fives uh, ARM CPU, <laughs> um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm entirely comforted by that answer, um, but <laughs> you can at least see that it's running. And to just prove that this isn't just a canned demo, uh, does somebody from the audience want to throw me a question? Yes, the question is why, uh, I'm actually gonna try what excuse can I use for forgetting my HDMI dongle? So let's see if the LLM can get me uh, out of the doghouse with Brian. <laughs> Check my surroundings. <laughs> so, and that's actually what I did. Brian was actually able to help me out with this. Um, so, a few things to notice here. This is actually pretty fast. Like, that's conversational speed. And that's on, like, an $80 piece of hardware uh, with no GPU to speak of. Um, you know, certainly no kind of NVIDIA-class GPU running entirely on a quad-core um, uh, CPU SOC, um, and uh, this is actually on an eight gigabyte RAM model, but it can run in four gigabytes of RAM. 
Um, and it doesn't work too badly. Like, you know, it's not chat GPT level of quality, but in terms of answering uh, basic questions and having conversations, uh, you know, if we'd shown this to people sort of, you know, two years ago, um, people's uh, minds would have been blown by this kind of level of quality. So a lot of what I'm gonna try and get across in this talk is that this stuff is possible. Um, you know, there's actually this incredible amount of unrealized capability that's just kind of sitting here that's available through open source tools. Um, you know, I showed you the actual code that's involved here. Um, the model itself is just an open weights model that was downloaded um, from Hugging Face. Um, and then everything else you've got here is really just, uh, you know, kind of off the shelf tools. Um, so going back to uh, the presentation, 